Tom here from Orange Systems. We're going to talk about Let's Encrypt. So if you're not familiar with Let's Encrypt and what they do, this is a good starter video. I wanted to cover this topic because there's a lot of misinformation or misunderstandings people have about how certificate authorities work or more specifically how Let's Encrypt works. So they are very official and they've issued quite a few certificates and we're a big user of these uh, certificates. Let's Encrypt is a nonprofit certificate authority run by the Internet Security Research Group that provides X509 certs for transport layer security encryption at no charge. The certificates are valid for 90 days, during which renewal takes place at any time. This offer is accompanied by an automated process designed for the manual creation, validation, and signing, installation, and renewal of certificates. So they were founded in November 18th of 2014. They started going live in 2016. And it takes a while to actually make all of this uh, happen and actually quite a big budget, but that is actually supported by a large number of sponsors. So let's look at their website here. Like they see right in the front page, a nonprofit certificate authority providing TLS certificates for 190 million websites. And the sponsor list goes on and on. You don't just have the Electronic Frontier Foundation, you have Mozilla, Cisco, Chrome, et cetera, Facebook, names you might have heard of in the world of the internet. So in the early days, as I've worked in tech a long time, it was not easy to get certificates set up. It took a lot more effort than it does with the Let's Encrypt. That extra effort it took to go through the signing, go through the process, well, and of course the expense of it meant a lot of times you just didn't bother unless there was absolutely an imperative need. You didn't bother installing a certificate on a website. It was just easier to leave the the website unencrypted going, hey, it's just a blog and who really cares if they can see what traffic's on there? Well, as Snowden let us know, uh, lots of government of agencies cared a whole lot. Matter of fact, we learned lots of people cared about what exact transactions, even if it was just your, um, not financial, but just general transactions going across websites. Turns out there was a lot of snooping going on. And this created a lot of problems and a lot of controversy of, well, how do we make it easy to encrypt? And that's kind of the brainchild that came up with, all right, how are we going to do this and how are we going to make it easy? And automation is a key factor there. But you can't just build the automation tool. If you built the automation tool and said, hey, look, this will automatically install certificates, the certificate authorities are going, we make money making it hard. Uh, that is an entire industry in there. And I'm not trying to just slam on the certificate authorities. Some of them are legit and very good, and they go through what they refer to as EV certificates for extended validation, where they get on the phone or validate you as a business to say that you actually own the certificate. And the idea was to instill confidence in the end users that um, this certificate was issued and the end users can have the confidence that we verified Tom Lawrence is really Tom Lawrence. When you go to Lawrence Systems, it's a valid website that we absolutely understand. The reality is end users never look at that. I can tell you end users never stop and check validation. Now, there was a short time where we seen little uh, check boxes at the top where that information was there and you could validate that Lawrence Systems and was validated with extended validation by a cert authorization company uh, that I was who I say I am. But that was short lived and all the browsers now are back to just having the little lock up there. And that's what we really wanna know is, do we have a secure connection to this website? Cool, we may continue. And with Let's Encrypt by doing the automation on there, they have now issued a billion of them. So they have really moved the bar forward and that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about them. They are now, through their automation tool, issuing certificates with only a 90 day certificate validation date. Now in the past, certificates could be longer and with the recent announcement from Apple, it sounds like certificates are getting reduced down to only one year. I believe in the earliest days of the internet, they were eight years maybe. And then they got down to like, you know, two year certificates and now we're going down to one year is the maximum length the certificate can be valid for. Now, just a little bit of overview of how this works. Certificate authorities have to work with the operating system vendors and the browsers to validate certificates. So they have to be in the root store of those operating systems, phones, whatever device you're using that has to go to a website and validate certificates. It's not just a matter of setting up the encryption between you and a website. It's having this kind of intermediary, the certificate authority, be in there and play man in the middle to go, all right, this is valid with this. Now, they're not able to see within the encryption by being a CA, they're able to validate the, to the browser that yes, when you go to lawrencesystems.com or you, when you go to lessencrypt.com, that is a valid certificate and it's valid between these dates and they used a signing key to sign and make sure that's valid. That's great. But one of the problems in the past were some of these CAs, they abused it and they've been removed 
in through the root store. So it's not easy to get in. It's certainly easy to get out. You make some bad moves and they will kick you out. And once they've kicked you out, any sites signed with it uh, will go away as well. So one of the more reputable places is DigiCert. One of the oddly least reputable ones for a while there became Norton. They were a certificate authority and they were just handling it very poorly and were issuing certificates uh, without doing the proper validation for who actually owned them. Now, the danger in that is if someone were to issue a certificate and claim to be Google and one of these certificate authorities actually accepted this uh, in someone that Google did not allow to accept that, you could then impersonate Google.com. Right now, if you were to try to set someone up to go to Google.com, but it wasn't really Google, the certificate authorities say, no, the certificate you have is not valid. The only way to get a valid certificate is to do that. So this validation process is extremely important to the integrity that we have of what websites we're going to and whether or not they're secure. And Let's Encrypt, by completely automating the process, made that a lot easier, therefore, it's kind of the default now when we set up websites, domains, even just for basic WordPress blogs for clients, it's really simple. We have a Let's Encrypt cert automatically installed. Matter of fact, with our hosting platform we use, it is uh, implicitly on and we have to turn it off if we didn't want it. So it's actually installed by default. And we don't have to do anything. You just set up the domain and that's all they're doing is domain validation, going, yep, you own this domain, we validated you own it, and Let's Encrypt is automated. You don't call someone, you don't have to go through the process. Now, a little bit more about how this works. So these are some of the uh, common questions on there. Is it free? Yes, it's absolutely free. It's funded by the sponsors, so that's why there's no payment involved in the Let's Encrypt. So anyone who has a domain name can use Let's Encrypt to obtain a trusted certificate at zero cost, automatic. This was the key. If they had just built the automation tool, like I said, the domain authorities, probably certificate authorities would have never really adopted this. So by building, and they built an open framework by which you can automate this, now other companies have the ability to use it, but Let's Encrypt being an authority is the easy one to use on there. And this is all open source, by the way. So automatic software running on a web server can interact with Let's Encrypt to painlessly obtain a certificate, securely configure it, and automatically take care of renewal. Secure. Let's Encrypt will serve as a platform for advancing TLS security best practices both on the CA side and by helping site operators properly secure their servers. Transparent. All certificates issued or revoked will be publicly recorded and available for anyone to inspect. And uh, I've actually got to know a lot about this from talking to my friend Phil. He's on the podcast with me um, and he published this blog post on November 20th of 2019. He has done all of this. He's a site reliability engineer and Let's Encrypt launched a certificate transparency log this past spring. We're excited to share how we built this in hopes that others can learn from what we did. Once again, they're fully open source and I'll leave a link to this so you can see how the entire log works. But what this does is lets you know when a certificate was issued, when that certificate expired, what other certs were issued by that particular entity. So it can be very transparent and the ability to revoke it. So for some reason we need to revoke a certificate and that does happen. If we change the IP address, something certificates are tied to that, we can do a revocation and uh, change where that goes by renewing the cert. So there you can track the history and figure out what's going on if something needs to happen. Not all the companies are fully as transparent as Let's Encrypt is. And this is really moving the bar forward. They want to set the standard for this and they are. And the misconceptions I see on Let's Encrypt are people think, well, just because it's free must be less secure. So we got to go get a certificate somewhere else and go through the trouble in the process. And that's simply not true. Let's Encrypt is every bit as secure as the other authorities. Now, do they go through the extended validation cert? No. But are those really as relevant? I don't really feel they are anymore. EV certs for extended validation with the whole concept of providing trust in the end users going to your website just doesn't feel good anymore because, well, it's so much work for them to go through and look who issued the cert. And I don't really feel end users before doing something really do that. It's kind of, it was a good idea, but not really practical on, to implement over long term. And even the browser companies have now removed the little extended validation certs. And yeah, I mean, you can click on it and figure out who issued the authority on there, but I don't think they're really taking the time to check it. And especially when you start looking at a business, well, I'm going to maybe some store to buy something, their corporate headquarters may or may not match where I think their location is. So now you have this extended confusion, not extended validation as far as I'm concerned uh, about how that works. So the last little piece I'll talk about this is the CertBot system. So the CertBot system, and they have a lot of different options in here. This is part of the automation. So you can look for what software your my HTTP website is running, HAProxy, Plesk, or none of the above. 
uh, and then you can choose the operating system and they have a massive amount of support. So CertBot is part of the automation tool on here. And like I said, this is an open framework in order to do this. Now to go a step further, and I'm gonna be doing some upcoming videos, which is also why I wanted to cover this on PFSense and HA Proxy, which has Let's Encrypt built in. The automated protocol also has ways you can do validation with DNS. So I'll be doing some of those type of videos and I wanted to mention, yes, it's secure and I'll reference this video. There is not any lessening of the security when you use a Let's Encrypt. The TLS encryption, the encryption you use to encrypt the things that you're doing with Let's Encrypt is up to you. That is your handling of the backend security. They're just handling the certificate part of this, that component. And what a lot more people are, well, you're kind of almost needing to do is have everything needs a cert. And we're even seeing some IoT devices come with this. Uh, FreeNAS has added it to the latest 11.3 version as well to issue full, fully qualified domain name certificates for different servers. Now these servers don't even have to be public facing when you do this, hence the reason they support things like DNS certifications. And like I said, as I start making videos on this, I wanna assure people uh, and clear up any confusion just because you get the certificate free because of the methodologies and the fact that this is run by sponsors, so it's not exactly just some free cert system, it's actually a legit business that is part of the whole certificate authority system and trusted by operating systems and browsers and devices. Uh, it is fully fine to use and perfectly secure. So I'll, as I do videos and as people say, I don't wanna use it because it's less secure, this will be my generic reply I give to them, but I also want to raise a bit of awareness about Let's Encrypt and say that yes, it is absolutely an amazing project. Yes, it's a very secure project. And uh, that whole post here, I mean, a billion certificates issued is, uh, well, that's just incredible. So we issued a billion certificates on February 27th and wow, uh, that is a whole, um, whole lot of certificates there. And this, uh, I, will, I will tell you, I spent some time talking to Phil, you know, when he did that, after he did that blog post, it takes a lot to run a whole certificate authority at the volume at which they issue certificates. So also read that write up he did. Um, Cause it's pretty interesting read of how they built a system at the scale that this operates at to maintain this log, maintain the volume of traffic that comes into it and all the servers that are, and then they talk about the technology in there. And uh, it's a great, it's a great service. Uh, I definitely recommend it. I don't see any reason not to use it. So uh, if the opportunity comes up to set up something that lets encrypt, don't have any um, worries about it. You can have full confidence that it's fully encrypted and a well-trusted system. Make sure you do the back end right. That part's still up to you. They at least will do the validation right over at Let's Encrypt. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.